Let's talk now about a story that uh, came out yesterday, which is the fact that the London Assembly has passed a motion to give migrants free travel around the capital. Now, they have said that it's going to be as little as £8 something per week. I don't know whether as little as means uh, £8.86 a week. There you go. I don't know if as little as means the lowest price um, and that it will just, you know, cover as much travel as people want. Uh, they said only funding travel to mandatory appointments. So how's that going to be monitored? How many appointments uh, are people getting? How many appointments do they need? The immigration lawyers not go to them? I mean, what's going on here? Let's speak to Ivan Sampson now, who is an immigration lawyer. Ivan, people have reacted to this uh, in a way that you'd expect some people to react to this, which is why do they get free travel when, uh, you know, bus fares are being put up around the country for our own people? Uh, but the, um, the, the, the London Assembly would say that this is necessary in order that people can go and have their claims listened to and applications processed. Um, I welcome the, the comments by the London Mayor, but I don't think it's enough. I don't think... It, look, it, the, the travel support of £8.96 doesn't go very far. When you consider that even for food, asylum seekers only receive £49 a week. Uh, and we have a legal responsibility to accommodate and financially support asylum seekers while their applications are considered. So it's a legal responsibility. Part of NAS, which is the National Asylum Support Service, which is responsible for supporting asylum seekers, part of their, their um, ethos is to promote social inclusion. So I personally feel that they should get total free travel to allow them to assimilate and travel and, and not be stuck in their accommodation. At the moment, they're only given uh, travel allowances, if they ask for it, to attend home office appointments, for example, an asylum screening interview or the substantive interview, which can sometimes be in Liverpool. So if you're, if you're in London, you happen to travel to Liverpool, well, how on earth are you going to get there? So um, that is given, and they, they're given actual vouchers or tickets. Uh, they don't get cash. Uh, Ivan, what, what, one thing that I uh, am trying to wrap my head around is um, these people who we put up in hotels and pay for travel costs, and I disagree with you on the fact that they should be given absolutely free travel, because that's given them greater benefits than the native population, which uh, if they've come into the country illegally and dumped their passports, I just can't see how that's fair in a world of, uh, you know, where you pay into a system like an insurance policy in a country and get stuff out of it, but that's my view. Um, but what I want to know is how these people, if they come here in a strap for cash, have afforded to pay the people traffickers all the way down the line from whence they came. That, that's a separate question, Alex. I no, mean, is look, it, but I, but we, can you we, answer? Do you we, know? Because you deal with these people. You deal with these people. And my yes. understanding is it, it costs thousands. It's not like 50 pence to get in a dinghy from Cali. It costs a fair whack of money. Most Brits don't even have a thousand quid in a savings account. So how are they affording to pay it? In my experience, what's happening is, is that their family members are sending the money. So they have family members in the UK who are settled here, maybe British, maybe indefinitely to remain uh, working here. And because they're concerned for the welfare of their family members in various parts of the world, they're being funded by them. So don't think that they've got loads of cash to spend on, on uh, paying people to transport them to the UK. That's not my experience. It's, it's, it's normally their family members in the UK concerned for their safety and welfare, sending them money. So can't the family members, if they've sort of, you know, sent the money to get them here, continue that support when they are here? Or is that a legal issue? Well, it, it is. We have, again, we have a legal responsibility to provide financial support and accommodation. Now, if you don't like it, vote for a government who scraps that. Not, I would consider, very humane. You have to remember, you just come, these people, these people are some of the most vulnerable people in the world fleeing persecution and i admit look amongst them are those who are not genuine i accept that there are many but the ones and that, that's the responsibility of the home office to weed them out consider their asylum applications quickly and remove them from the country but the ones that are genuine fleeing genuine persecution we should welcome them look after them Treat them humanely. The, the, the problem I have as well is that you know, France has often said you're the El Dorado. That's why people are getting in dinghies and, and risking their lives crossing the channel. The problem I have with this from a moral stance is uh, knowing 
about some of these migratory flows and what goes on downstream before they get here, knowing why it's largely young men in those boats and what happens to teenagers and women as they try and cross continents to get here, knowing that a lot of women uh, don't end up in those dinghies because they've been plucked off to go into sex slavery. Young girls knowing that young teenagers are plucked off to have their organs harvested. Surely, actually, that you're creating a deterrent to make sure people don't take those sorts of risks, knowing what happens during that process, is the morally responsible thing to do. Well, look, just think about it. Young women, as you said, fleeing, they'd rather take that risk than suffer the persecution in their home country. That tells you about where they're fleeing from. Now, at the moment, there are no legal routes to get to, to, to claim asylum. The only way you can claim asylum under the convention is to physically be present in the UK. That needs to change. There should be mechanisms in place for people to claim out asylum outside the UK. So at the moment, the only way people can claim is if they get across here, land on British soil and make a claim. That needs to change. I, I, I mean, the problem I have with this when people, look, I'm not anti-sympathetic to people in war zones or people fleeing persecution or what's not. Of course I'm not. I spent a lot of my life living and working across the developing world. I've seen uh, what goes on in the developing world with my own eyes, having lived there. Um, and uh, the, the problem I have is when you look at uh, people who might come here and claim asylum because they're persecuted for uh, being gay, well, that happens in about two thirds of the world's countries. Then equally, if it's a, based on poverty, that's billions of people. If you're talking about war zones, you just have to look that there's millions of people, one third of the entire population of Sudan right now are displaced. And you wonder, well, how on earth do you set up these processing centers abroad and, and, and somehow limit the number because you know understandably there's got to be a cap on this you can't just say to everybody in a country that is facing internal conflict um civil unrest persecution tyrannical regimes outright war that um great if you claim asylum you'll get it because unfortunately that number rolls into you know scales and is multiples of the size of our own population no, I agree with you 100%. I think you're absolutely right. Look, there's about 80 million potential asylum seekers that can claim asylum. We can't take everyone. We don't have the capacity to take everyone. I accept that, and that's absolutely right. What we have to take is our fair share. And if you look at the legal tables in the EU, for example, we're 17th when we were in the EU. So a country as wealthy as this can certainly afford more than it, what it's taking at the moment. What I don't accept, what I don't agree with, is illegal. Um, irregular migration people crossing the channel at their own will we should have control of our borders would it not make and sense do you not think it mental yeah, responsibility that. of the government i just think it would make more sense if we were to say to neighboring countries the neighboring countries of sudan uh, we will give you money and help you accommodate people fleeing persecution so people aren't having to pay nefarious international criminal organizations terrorist organizations i mean this is how they make their money these days it used to be you know poppies and selling heroin now the uh, international people trafficking business is worth far more than the international drugs trade so if we continue to allow this migratory flow because people see at the end light at the end of the tunnel it's aiding and abetting some really awful people making money using this to expose our porous borders for their own dangerous purposes um and I just think that, unfortunately, it is... Look, I have sympathy with people. I do. I'm not a monster. But I think that sometimes you have to make tough decisions to protect the greater number of people. I agree. Look, we're more aligned with our thoughts than you may think. Uh, most people do not flee to other countries other than their neighbouring countries. If you look at most of the war zones, the refugee camps are set across the borders. So very, very few people actually come to the UK. It's a tiny percentage. But even those should not be allowed here as irregular applicants. They should be given safe legal routes. We should take our fair share. There needs to be a treaty with the EU. There has to be a coordinated effort to deal with the asylum problem. And I agree with you. It should be dealt with at the next neighbouring safe country, that we should feed into that, help them maintain themselves there until the situation is better in their own country where they can move back. People, Most people do not want to leave their country to come to the UK. 
it's simply not true the ones that come here for come for one simple reason they've got family members here that's what draws them to the uk it's very few people just randomly decide i'm going to the uk it doesn't happen they haven't got the resources to do it in the first place it's the family members which facilitate that we should have safe legal routes if you've got a family member in a in a war-torn country you should be allowed to uh, support them when they get here we did it for ukraine we did it successfully for ukraine and yet we don't do it for countries where people have brown skin that's not fair uh, Ivan, thank you ever so much. Ivan Sampson, immigration lawyer there.